In this video, we'll talk about rheumatoid arthritis, diagnosis, and management. So rheumatoid arthritis is important to remember that the age range is around 40s to 50s, and it is associated with family history, with the HLA gene, so important to remember the HLA gene. And it means that if the patient has family history, it means that they have worse prognosis, so it has a prognostic value as well. Now, when do we think about rheumatoid arthritis? If the patient with the age we mentioned, they present with bilateral wrist or metacarpophalangeal and the proximal interpharyngeal joints, and there is a swelling and tenderness, which means there is an inflammatory process, then you have to think about possibility of rheumatoid arthritis. Now, if the symptoms are present less than six weeks and you do rheumatoid factor and came back negative, then this is likely viral infection. They usually have swelling and tenderness, but less prominent than in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And why we are talking about six weeks? The reason is most or almost all viral infection or viral induced arthritis resolve within six weeks. Important to note that all viral infection can cause arthritis, but the most common one is parvovirus. Now, if the duration of the arthritis is more than six weeks and rheumatoid factor is positive, then this is high likely to be rheumatoid arthritis. Still, you need to confirm it with CCP. And CCP is very specific, which means if it's positive, then bang, that's enough for diagnosis. If it's negative, then you have to think about other criteria, which includes presence of ESR and CRP elevation and if the patient has typical features of joint involvement, which is the proximal interferingian joint or MCPs, as well as involvement of small joints more than the large joints, and the higher the number of small joints involved means that this patient has more likely to be rheumatoid arthritis compared, for example, to viral arthritis. And this is enough for diagnosing rheumatoid arthritis in patients who are CCP negative. Now, what does it mean if you have rheumatoid factor and CCP positive? It means that this patient have what we call double positive rheumatoid arthritis, and these patients have worse prognosis as well as higher likely of developing bone erosions. Now, let's talk about complications of rheumatoid arthritis. And the first one we're going to talk about the atlantoaxial joint, C1 and C2 cervical spine. For this joint is most commonly or most prone to move anteriorly and posteriorly compared to other cervical spines because it is loosely attached to the ligaments. As a result of this, they are more prone to have neurological deficits with their motor or sensory. Second, we have involvement of the heart and that can present as pericarditis as well as coronary artery disease, which is a three times more common in patients with rheumatoid arthritis compared to the general population. Now, third complication is the lung involvement. And here we are talking mainly about the pleural effusion. Important to know the characteristics of the pleural fluid in these patients. So LDH will be elevated, white count will be low compared to infection, this is important, white count will be low here. And in total, it's gonna be an exudate. And the glucose, theoretically, it should be less than 60, but practically, usually much less than that, and usually less than 20. Next, we'll talk about involvement of the proximal interpharyngeal joints and the distal interpharyngeal joint. There are some important deformities that you should know about. So we have two deformities. The first one is we have extension and deflection, respectively, of the PIP and DIP. And the other deformity, it involves flexion and extension of the PIP and DIP, respectively. Now, the first one, we call it swan neck deformity, and the second one, we call it boutonniere deformity. Now let's talk about management. Management is important from a practical standpoint as most of the patients in the clinic, rheumatology clinic, are rheumatoid arthritis patients. Unless contraindicated, methotrexate should be given to all patients. But since they don't work directly, you need to start them on an acid so it can control their symptoms in the meantime. Then you will check on them after three months and see if their symptoms are controlled, then you just need to follow up with them every three to six months. And you want to check with their CBC and CMP for liver function tests to see if they have side effects from the methotrexate. 
Now, x-rays, you should do them every two years to look for erosions. And since they are on methotrexate, set, you want to make sure their folate levels are good. Now, if they are not controlled, then the next step you want to do is increase the dose of methotrexate. You can go up to 20 to 25 milligrams every week. After that, you can follow up in three months. If the symptoms are not controlled, then you can add another non-biologic DMARDs, including sulfasalazine, plus minus hydroxychloroquine. And this is what we call triple therapy. The other option is adding a biologic, and that's including etanercept, adalimumab, or infliximab. Now the question is, which is better for rheumatoid arthritis, to add two non-biologic DMARDs and do a triple therapy or add a biologic to the methotrexat? The answer is triple therapy is better to control the symptoms, while adding a biologic can be a good option if you are worried about the side effects from the non-biologic triple therapy. And this is it for rheumatoid arthritis. Hope you guys learned something. See you in the next one.